Church. We hope everybody's having a wonderful Shabbat time. Your brother Zach Wah, and I'm with your brother Kasafo here today. Shalom, All right. shalom. Brother Kasa. All right. We have a great exciting lesson for you today. We're tying the previous lesson together, so I hope you watch them. All right. And if you've been following along, we hope that you're gaining the understandings of the women's series. And if this is your first time watching our lessons, we appreciate you and a higher willing a higher will allow us to explain it right for you to be able to gain it and understand it quickly the lesson is not only intended for women but for men also seeing the woman came from the man and many tribulations between the two are the same all right before we get started brothers and sisters as believers we all have a duty we must perform for Allah we ask that you all, if Alaheim guides you to do so, if the lessons are helping you in your walk, to share the lessons. Post them on your social medias. You can edit, chop, cut segments, whatever you want to do. We just ask if Alaheim places it in the heart of any man or woman to partake in the work to spread the gospel in this fashion. Um, all right, our lesson today is alignment of the heart. And um, just like I said previously, this lesson is a continuation from the from the women's series, from the lessons that we've done before. And they're not just for men or women. So we hope everybody gains and really gets that foundational and that real understanding of this walk and this journey and everything that that transpires and everything that we have to do ourselves in order for us to make it and grow into the person that Allah wants us to be. Brother Casa, can we start at Amos 3 and 3, please? Sure. Amos chapter 3, verse 3. Can two walk together except they be agreed? Now, that's a great question, right? Now, this pertains to anything. This pertains to your relationship with Allah This pertains to your relationship with your spouse. Um, you have to be in agreement. Right. We had a conversation, if you've been following the lessons, one about Yache, right, about Yache knocking on the door. Right. In the grab and hold of contentment lesson and two about finding what works for you and sticking to it. And we didn't fully explain that, but we're going to explain that here in this lesson. I hire willing. We're going to further expound on these subjects and really understand where our hearts have to be in this walk. Whether it pertains to Alahayim or with your spouse, as I said previously. We have to go back to the beginning to understand present day because most of women are at the same place our foremother Chiawa or Eve was or where she started. If we're disobedient to Alahayim, can we really be obedient to anybody else? And that's the question we're going to ask today. Now, in doing so, in being obedient, we have to commit. We have to commit to Allah and we have to commit to our spouses, right? And that includes making a choice. One. Two, believing. And three, trusting. Whether it be trusting Allah with your whole heart or trusting your spouse with your whole heart. And that same energy women have to have toward their husbands. So the same energy you have for Allah it's the same energy you have to have towards your husband as well. All right. Okay, let's go back to the beginning with Chiawa or Eve. And after they were kicked out of paradise. I'm sure everyone knows the story of Chiawa and what transpired for them both, her and Adam, to be expelled from paradise. If you need to read back over that part, it's in Genesis chapter 3 and also the book of Jubilees chapter 3. But we're going to continue. We're going to go into her second fall. If you're not aware of her second fall, you're going to learn about it. 
Now, this is the story of her second fall, which unlike the first, where she disobeyed Elohim. In this fall, she disobeys her husband directly. And we really get to discover Chiawa or Eve's heart. Brother Kasafo, can we go to the lives of Adam and Eve? And we're going to start at chapter one. All right. The lives of Adam and Eve, chapter one. When they were driven out from paradise, they made themselves a booth and spent seven days mourning and lamenting in great grief. But after seven days, they began to be hungry and started to look for victual to eat, and they found it not. Then Eve said to Adam, my Lord, I'm hungry. Go look for something for us to eat. Perchance, the Lord Allah will look back and pity us and recall us to the place in which we were before. Right, so that's paradise that she's talking about. And Adam arose and walked seven days over all that land and found no victuals such as they used to have in paradise. And Eve said to Adam, Wilt thou slay me? that I may die, and perchance Allah I am the Lord will bring thee into paradise, for on my account hast thou been driven thence. Adam answered, Forbear, Eve, from such words, that preadventure Allah I am bring not some other curse upon us. How is it possible that I should stretch forth my hand against my own flesh? Nay, let us arise and look for something for us to live on that we fail not. Right. So you see the you see the mindset of Eve after she fell. She went into sorrow. Right. So we can see how that happens to us. And many of us, when we do something wrong or we fall, that sorrow creeps up upon us. And you can even see it in, in Eve or Chiawa, how she was like, slay me. Just go ahead and slay me because I messed up. And right there. She was already given it to one of the spirits of, of the evil one. So we really have to be aware of what spirit we're giving place to. Uh, continue, Brother Casa. Chapter four. And they walked about and searched for nine days, and they found none such as they were used to have in paradise, but found only animals' food. And Adam said to Eve, This hath the Lord provided for animals and brutes to eat. But we used to have angels' food. But it is just and right that we lament before the sight of Allah Hayyam who made us. Let us repent with a great penitence. Perchance the Lord will be gracious to us and will pity us and give us a share of something for our living. And Eve said to Adam, What is penitence? Tell me, what sort of penitence am I to do? Let us not put too great a labor on ourselves, which we cannot endure, so that the Lord will not hearken to our prayers and will turn away his countenance from us because we have not fulfilled what we promised. My Lord, how much penitence hast thou thought to do, for I have brought trouble and anguish upon thee. And Adam said to Eve, Thou canst not do so much as I, but do only so much as thou hast strength for. For I will spend forty days fasting, but do thou arise and go to the river Tigris and lift up a stone and stand on it in the water up to thy neck in the deep of the river. And let no speech proceed out of thy mouth, since we are unworthy to address the Lord, for our lips are unclean from the unlawful and forbidden tree. And do thou stand in the water of the river thirty-seven days, but I will spend 40 days in the water of Jordan. Perchance the Lord Allah will take pity upon us. All right. So we see Adam gave her commandment to stand in the river. A virtuous wife will hold fast to her husband's request and stand on the rock of Yache, which was the semblance. The semblance of her standing on the rock in, in the sea was standing on Yache, no matter what was going on around you, no matter how everything was able to be moved around you that she was going to stand on the rock. So it was a semblance of his penitence that that Adam was actually trying to convey to Allah. It, it was he was speaking to Allah without saying words. So we can see the correlation. Right. Go ahead and continue, Brother Casa. Chapter seven. 
And Eve walked to the river Tigris and did as Adam had told her. Likewise, Adam walked to the river Jordan and stood on a stone up to his neck in water. And Adam said, I tell thee, water of Jordan, grieve with me, and assemble to me all swimming creatures which are in thee, and let them surround me and mourn in company with me. Not for themselves let them lament, but for me, for it is not they that have sinned, but I. Forthwith, all living things came and surrounded him, and from that hour the water of the Jordan stood still, and his current was stayed. Look at that. So when he stood on the rock of Yache, Yache made all the water be still around him. So you can you can see the semblance of what was actually happening. Go ahead. Chapter nine. And eighteen days passed by. Then Satan was wroth and transformed himself into the brightness of angels and went away to the river Tigris to Eve and found her weeping. Now look at this. Adam standing in the water, right? He's standing on a rock. He's standing on the rock of Yache. Yache sees what's going on, understands Adam's heart, and he makes the water still. And at the same time, Satan gets wroth and gets upset once he sees what's happening. Right? So, and look what he does. Look what Satan does once he sees Elohim's response to Adam. He goes and he does something else. Right? Now, we have two things here, right? Because Satan got upset. He got envious and he got wroth because he seen what Elohim was doing for Adam. And he also seen another dichotomy when he looked at Eve because Eve was weeping. And one would say, okay, she's weeping because she's sad about what happened or, or she's upset about what happened and that it was her fault that they got kicked out of paradise, right? But it's more to it. Eve, Eve was having a problem with being in agreement because she didn't want to go stand in the water and stand on the rock. And we're going to we're going to get further understanding of it as we continue to read. So she was not in agreement with Adam to do what Adam commanded her to do. For we already seen a heart and respect to Elohim in her first fall and his command for her and Adam. And as we said previously, if we can't be obedient to Elohim, can we really be obedient to anyone else? So these are the things that we're really going to get to and narrow down here in this in this lesson. Uh, continue, Brother Casa, so we can understand what's going to continue to transpire. Satan was wroth and transformed himself into the brightness of angels and went away to the river Tigris to Eve and found her weeping. And the devil himself pretended to grieve with her. And he began to weep and said to her, Come out of the river and lament no more. Cease now from sorrows and moans. Why art thou anxious and thy husband Adam? The Lord Allah hath heard your groaning and hath accepted your penitence. And all we angels have entreated on your behalf and made supplication to the Lord. Because of heart, was not in agreement with her husband, the devil had place to enter in and deceive her. Now the devil can come in many different forms, whether in your head through the angel of wickedness, or he can work in other people that have a vessel prepared for him. Uh, can we read the Acts of Thomas? We're going to come back to the um, lives of Adam and Eve. Can we read the Acts of Thomas chapter 76 so we can understand how the devil is able to move through people the way that he is. Acts of Thomas 76. And like your Christ that helps you in whatever you do, so is my father that helps me in whatever I do. Now, this is actually an evil spirit that's actually talking to Thomas. Um, Thomas had pulled the evil spirit out of somebody and the evil spirit was having a conversation. With, or was he in the, was he in the serpent? Remember the woman and her daughter who were being afflicted? Oh, that was that time? Yeah, that was then. Okay, so the woman and her daughter were being afflicted, and they were 
possessed by evil spirits and the demon actually starts speaking to thomas because thomas was asking it what was its employment what was it doing and the spirit told how it operates to work for satan all right and he's talking about just like your christ who helped you because he was he already knew who thomas was he said just like your christ it is who helps you i do this work for my master right um, Brother Carson, you don't mind? Can we start over in Acts of Thomas 76 so they can understand? Acts of Thomas 76. And like your Christ that helps you in whatever you do, so is my Father that helps me in whatever I do. And in the same way, he uses you to prepare vessels worthy of inhabiting, so also does he seek out a vessel whereby I may accomplish his deeds. Right. So... Satan is seeking out vessels where he can accomplish the deeds, where his minions or his people, his spirits can go and accomplish the deeds. And I mean people, like not actual people, but his followers, right? Those that, that he's employed over, right? But the main thing here is being in agreement with the will of her husband to withstand the devil. And that's what we're actually talking about. Um, can we jump over to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10? We're going to read to down to about 18. All right. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of Allah, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of Allah, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. All right. Having done all to stand. And that's one of the things that we're going to be focused on today, is have we done all to stand? Have we been putting together protocols to help when you may be struggling or doing what's needful to keep you from going in a downward spiral? We have to give it our all to keep from falling. Now, we have to give our 100%, just like Elohim has to give his 100%. So when we come together, there's no double-mindedness between us. There's no doubt between us. Because if you truly believe something, you're going to give everything that you got. And if you're truly striving to get something or to get somewhere, you're going to give it everything that you got. And that's what we have to do in this walk as well. Um, continue, Brother Casa. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. All right. So we have to have the truth in our hearts wrapped around us like a belt holding everything together. Speaking the truth of where we are in our walk and being honest so that we can grow from it, being honest in humility. So we have to be honest of where we are in our walk. And we have to keep that truth so that we can grow from that place. Because if you already think that you're past that place, you're never going to be able to truly deal with it and grow from it. Continue, Brother Casa. And having on the breastplate of righteousness. And we have to cover that truth with righteousness. So having that truth in our heart, yet we have to protect that truth and not allow it to take us into sorrow. We have to be truthful with ourselves and also protect ourselves. Right? So we have to protect our heart from the adversary so that he can't use that truth against us. Not to be down or sad about where we are, but instead praising Allah Hayyam for giving us understanding so that we may grow thereby, so that we can grow from it. Go ahead, Brother Kasa. Just to add, Asher spake on the good inclination of a person who's seeking after righteousness. He says in Asher chapter 1, Verse 6, it says, Therefore, if the soul take pleasure in the good inclination, all its actions are in righteousness. 
And if it's sin, it straightway repenteth. For having its thoughts set upon righteousness, it casteth away wickedness. It straightway overthrow the evil and uprooteth the sin. In the realm of being in truth and even in making a mistake, keeping that blessed prayer to righteousness to see it, call it out, and stay on the path. And don't be deterred by going down in that spiral. You have to protect yourself from the enemy because as we've seen with Chiawa, as we seen with Eve, when she made her mistake, that sorrow came right after. And a lot of times that's what happens when we fall, that sorrow comes and that spirit causes us to, to do some sin. It takes us down into a spiral. So we have to have that breastplate of righteousness on to protect us from the wiles of the enemy. Even in the case of whether we fail or whether we just will reveal something. Maybe Allah revealed something. And to protect that from the enemy being able to use it against you, you have to have that breastplate of righteousness on. Like, yeah, this is true. I do this, and this is something I have to overcome. But Allah showed it to me for me to overcome it and not for me to go into sorrow and feel bad about it. But yet I should be rejoicing that Allah showed it to me because he's given me a chance to overcome it given me a chance to see it so that I can be aware of it so that I actually can put protocols in place until I get out of the habit of doing this. So definitely it's a good scripture. Praise the higher. Continuing in Ephesians chapter 6 verse 15. And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Right. Now the gospel of peace being lowly, knowing that we all struggle just as any other person, and it's only Elohim that revealed to us for us to glorify him. So that's the gospel of peace, being lowly toward all men, knowing that Elohim is working in them as he's working in you, knowing that you have your thing that you have to focus on, and they have their things that they have to focus on and having that peace between the midst of you all, knowing that everybody has their different struggles. Go ahead, brother. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of Allah. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. We have to really pay attention to our own heart and those around us. Keeping guard of what enters into their hearts as well. So being wise as a serpent, harmless as a dove and being watchful for our own soul and our own, our own heart and also the hearts of those around us of what may enter into them at any given moment. Can we jump over to um, James chapter four, verse seven? And we're gonna read seven and eight, please. Sure, James chapter four, verse seven. Submit yourselves therefore to Allah I am. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. All right. So it says, submit yourselves therefore to Allah I am. The word submit means to subordinate. That means to lower yourself in rank or position. So you have to place Allah as a higher stature than yourself. That's why when Sirach talks about pride, it's that pride is the beginning of when one fleeth from Allah It's because you never submitted yourself to Allah And that's one of the key things is that we actually have to submit ourselves to Allah so that he can actually start forming and growing in us and knowing that he's greater than us. I know a lot of times people may say Allah is great or Allah is this or it, but it's just with word. That's why he says my people, they, they love me in word, right? But our deeds are actually remiss, they're slack. So we actually have to, that has to be in our heart that Allah is greater, greater than us. 
and that will actually help us to resist the devil because we will we will see the things that we need to fix taking that pride away will actually allow us to be able to hear we'll be able to hear alahayim and we'll be able to hear those around us that truly want to help us and then hearing those people around us that Alahayim may be working in, that may be trying to help you see something or to help you grow, it actually allows you to resist the devil as well so that he'll flee from you. All right, so you won't continue in those things. Um, continue, Brother Kass. Verse 8, draw nigh to Alahayim, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners. And purify your hearts, you double-minded. Draw nigh means to approach, right? So you actually have to approach Alahayim. And how do you do that? You approach Alahayim by actually ridding of the things that are not of him. So any spirit that's in your vessel, just like the Acts of Thomas talked about how he's preparing vessels for the evil spirits to dwell, we actually have to prepare our vessel for Yache to dwell, to come and knock on the door, to be able to enter. All right? So we have to put forth the effort, and Alahayim will strengthen us in it when we give that 100%. Our hearts have to be purified from being double minded with our own desires. And that's part of the thing why a lot of us have such a hard time with this walk. It's because of the double-mindedness. That's why it says in James, cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Because it's our own desires that are contradicting or that are a conflict with Alahim desires for us. And the more that conflict or the more we give place to the opposite side and give in to our desires, the further we get from Alahayim. So in, in making these changes and making these choices and actually committing to Alahayim, we actually are strengthening ourselves in the righteous spirit. And we're strengthening ourselves and making a, a vessel inhabitable for Alahayim to dwell in. Now this will help in your relationship with Alahayim and this will help in your relationship with your spouse as well. Because the changes that Allah is making in ridding of those evil spirits actually removes a lot of conflict from your relationship as well. And the more you operate in the ways of Allah, the more peace will be between you all. Kasa, can we read Surah 25 and 1? Sure. In three things. I was beautified and stood up beautiful before Allah and men. The unity of brethren, the love of neighbors, a man and a wife that agree together. So the, the Holy Spirit was actually beautified and a man and a wife that agree together. You're getting to see that having that unity, having that agreement actually helps you both walk together. A man and his wife have to have the same desires in order to please Allah. And the more they agree and align the desires, the stronger and more blessed they will become. I know many of us, we've seen relationships where you see two people that aren't aligned. That's why we started in the scripture of Amos 3 and 3, can two walk together, at least they be agreed. And that question is very powerful because if you guys are walking two different directions, how can you walk together? How can you please one another? Because you're, you're walking two different ways, you're walking two different ways. You're walking contradictory to one another. Instead of walking together, if the man has desires, that's one thing, 
and the wife has desires that's something totally different, the relationship is going to struggle. And that's only on a carnal standpoint. Let's look at that same dichotomy when it comes to Alahayim. You have Alahayim and his desires for you, then you have your own desires, and you're literally walking away from one another. You're not aligned. You're not parallel. But let's see the power of two people or even Alahayim in you putting yourself in that scenario. Let's see the power of two that agree. Brother Kaza, can we read Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes 4 and 9 through 12, please? Yes, sir. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 9. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. So first you have a good reward if you both come into agreement and get aligned. Go ahead. But if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. So if one falls, the other one is there to help. Go ahead. But woe to him that is alone when he falleth. Right, he so if you're alone, you don't have nobody to help you get up. You're by yourself. For he hath not another to help him up. Right, and that's what the enemy wants for us. The enemy wants us to be alone. That's why when, when we fall or something like that, the first thing is, I need to be by myself. I need some time. Yeah, because that's where the enemy has place. He can get you alone. You see how he approached Chia while, or Eve when she was in sorrow. That's when he comes. He wants to get you alone because it's easy to deal with you. You don't have no help. Continue, brother. Again, if two lie together, then they have heat. But how can one be warm alone? All right. So even in our carnal sense, if two people lie together, they warm each other up. But if you're lying alone, you have n there's no body warmth except your own. All right. Go ahead. If one prevail against him, two shall withstand him, and the threefold cord is not quickly broken. All right. So if one prevail against him, there's two people that he has to deal with. He just don't have to deal with one alone. It's not a one on one fight. So you have better odds, right? And a threefold cord is not quickly broken. So if it's a man and two wives, you have even more power to withstand the devil. All right. So let's go back to the life of Adam and Eve. All right. So there's Satan speaking. Chapter nine, continuing. And he has sent me to bring you out of the water and give you the nourishment which you had in paradise and for right. which you are crying out. All right. So Satan is coming on behalf, looking as an angel of light, and he's giving her a message. Pretty much he's telling her what she wants to hear. All right. Go ahead. Now come out of the water, and I will conduct you to the place where your victual hath been made ready. All right. And by the enemy saying these things that she really wanted to hear and desired in her heart, she was able to be moved by the devil's words. Because of her double-mindedness toward her husband and Alahayim, she didn't wait on her husband's word. Instead, was weakened and not able to endure because she wasn't in agreement in the heart. Right, let's continue, Brother Casa. Chapter 10. But Eve heard and believed and went out of the water of the river, and her flesh was trembling like grass from the chill of the water. And when she had gone out, she fell on the earth, and the devil raised her up and led her to Adam. But when Adam had seen her and the devil with her, he wept and cried aloud and said, O oh Eve, Eve, where is the labor of thy penitence? How hast thou been again ensnared by our adversary, by whose means we have been estranged from our abode in paradise and spiritual joy? Now, I want everybody to pay attention. How was Adam able to see the devil so clearly and Chiawa couldn't see him? 
It's a good question. Eve was blinded by her desire and not walking in truth of heart, being double-minded for the enemy to play upon her. So because she had that desire in her heart and Adam didn't have that desire in his heart, Adam was able to see clearly where Eve was blinded. So you see how much desires play into this. Just like the Bible, for instance, if a man has a desire for something, he's going to find it in the Bible because the Bible is spiritual. He's going to find a way to make it be that even though it's not. And the same thing with Eve, because her desire was not aligned with her husband to actually be standing in that water and standing on that stone. She found a way the devil, no matter what he was saying, she found a way to get out of it. And that's how powerful desires are. This is why our desires have to be aligned with Allah for us to be able to, to do this walk, for us to be able to endure this walk, for us to be able to complete it. And that our desires have to be aligned with Allah And for women, your desire has to be aligned with Allah and your husband. And that's how we're going to be able to walk through and get through this thing called life. We're going to get through all these tribulations and these trials and these temptations is by having a heart aligned with Allah and ridding of all the evil spirits that cause us not to be aligned with Allah and that cause us to go off of the path. Brother Kasim. Chapter 11, and when she heard this, Eve understood that it was the devil who had persuaded her to go out of the river. Now, just as we read in Ecclesiastes 4, right, when it says you, you have a helper, right, you have somebody to help you. Look at that. When Adam called out the devil in the midst of Eve, she was able to see. It says, and when she heard this, right? When she heard Adam say what he said, Chiawa understood. Eve understood. She understood that it was the devil who persuaded her. Now, the devil enticed her. I remember, as we've read in the other lessons, how they'll entice you. The devil enticed her, but it was her own desire that allowed her to go in that direction because all she needed was to be enticed. All she needed was the opportunity so that she can act out her desire. And that's all the devil does. The devil only gives us an opportunity to act out our desire. And it's the choice that we're making to give into it because we want it. And we have to be strengthened to get away from those spirits and not allow those spirits to have place in our heart to be able to lead us astray. Uh, continue, Brother Costa. And she fell on her face on the earth, and her sorrow and groaning and wailing were redoubled. And she cried out and said, Woe unto thee, thou devil! Why dost thou attack us for no cause? What hast thou to do with us? What have we done to thee? For thou pursuest us with craft. Or why doth thy malice assail us? Have we taken away thy glory and caused thee to be without honor? Why dost thou harry us, thou enemy, and persecute us to the death in wickedness and envy? I love our mother. She she had her struggles, and many other women have this struggle too. Instead of taking responsibility and saying, you know what, it was the desires of my heart that led me astray and that 
allowed the devil to have place. She blamed it all on the devil. But we know for the devil to, to move her, one or more of his workers have to have had place in her. The devil being the chief of those spirits can see when they have place in you as well. Hopefully the apocalypse of Paul comes into remembrance for everyone that's seen the other lessons. Chiwa needed to speak the truth in her heart so that she can work to come out of the grips of the devil. If she would have been honest and confessed her fault and confessed her heart, it would have been quicker for her to come out of it. Which eventually she did confess her faults at the, at the end. She actually gave her testimony of it, but you can see her falls and you can see her struggles. Um, can we read the Shepherd of Hermit Mandate 12? Because it's going to give us a lot of insight when it comes to what was going on with Chiwa and what was going on with Eve and what's going on with many of our women today. Shepherd of Hermit Mandate 12, chapter 5, verse 2. He cannot, saith he, this is speaking of the devil. Thank you. He cannot, saith he, overmaster the servants of Elohim who set their hope on him with their whole heart. Now, even the devil knows this. He cannot, and the, the angels know this as well. He cannot, say if he overmastered the servants of Elohim who set their hope on him with their whole heart. You can't give 99.9%, 90%, 80%. You have to give 100% and you have to be aligned with Elohim and all his desires for you and all his desires that he has. And that right there would protect you from the wells of the enemy. Because if you have any fault or you have any desire that you're holding on to, it just gives place for the devil. That's all it does. It gives place for the devil to enter in. And that's all he's looking for. All he's looking for is one little spot where he can just squeeze up in there. And we have to understand this. We have to understand this for our own salvation and for our own temple that we're supposed to be protecting and that we're supposed to be preparing and making a place for Yahche and the Holy Spirit to dwell. I'll continue, Brother Kassel. The devil can wrestle with them, but he cannot overthrow them. He can wrestle with you, but he cannot overthrow you. Now, he can tempt you, but he can't overthrow you. Because he's going to tempt you no matter what. He tempt Yache. And Yache, there was no place for the devil in Yache. There was no place he could swindle in there, but yet he still tempt him. All right? Go ahead, Casa. If then ye resist him, he will be vanquished and will flee from you disgraced but you gotta resist him. And the only way that you can resist him is if there's no place of him or any of his spirits in you. Because if it's in you, you're not gonna resist him. You, you, may, you may battle, you may struggle, but eventually you're gonna give in because it's your desire and he knows it. He knows that that evil spirit has place in you and all he has to do is set it before you. And you're going to take it. Now, look at this. Look at how subtle the devil is. He actually said why he can overmaster. Well, excuse me, the angel, excuse me. The devil knows this. The devil knows these things and look how subtle he is and how he knows that he can overmaster Eve. He already knows it. 
So all he has to do is come saying the right things that that make it so that she feel like she's justified. That the angels have heard thy penitence and forgiven you. He said exactly what she wanted to hear. And that's the same spirit that a lot of men walk in is saying what they know a woman wants to hear because they're walking in the same spirit, that same spirit of the devil. It's that simple. Because of the woman's desire. So just like it said that the evil spirits make a dwelling place or the devil prepares things for the evil spirits to dwell, he also does that in men. And that's why when that spirit is in the man, the, that same evil spirit can see its, its spirit in the woman. So then the man operates in the fashion to deceive the woman as well. And the same likewise with the women. These spirits are not gender based. They operate no matter what gender it is. So we have to be aware that that spirit is not in us to, to attack us. Whatever spirit it is. Go ahead and continue, Brother Casa. But as many, saith he, as are utterly empty, fare the devil as if he had power. So those that are utterly empty, the ones that are not cleaving unto Allah with their whole heart, We're gonna we're gonna get further down to it because we actually gonna go into the the bottles and that's gonna further explain this. Um but as many say if as are utterly empty, fear the devil as if he had power. And you know why this is said? Because the devil actually doesn't have any power. It's actually us playing against ourselves because it's our desire that he's playing on. He didn't place that desire in us. We've chose that desire. We've had pleasure in that desire. So all he has to do is entice us. So he really doesn't have any power. If I come and I know that you have a drinking problem and I place a bottle right before you, do I have power? I didn't control you. I didn't move your hand or, or open your mouth or place anything in your heart. I didn't do anything. I don't have any power. All I did was entice you. And that's all the devil does. He just entices us of our own desire because he can see it. He's a spirit. He's an angel. He's a spiritual being. He can see the spiritual things within us and around us. Just like a man, you can't deceive Allah Hayim because Allah Hayim is a spiritual being. He sees what's within you. Now, because many of us are not aligned with Allah Hayim, we have to understand what he requires of us firstly. Because to be aligned with him, you have to understand what he requires of you. So that's learning the law, learning the fruits of the spirit, learning the commandments, 
And after you learn those things and learn what he requires of you and how he expects you to operate and what he wants you to abstain from, then you have to commit and agree in your heart that that's what you want as well. So it's not just because that's what Allah wants that you do it. It's because you want it too. And that's the part that catches a lot of us. That we know is right. We know that's what Allah wants. But not necessarily do we want the same thing. And that's what causes a lot of us to, to leave that place for the devil to enter in. Now, after committing and agreeing, you have to put forth the effort of being convinced in your heart and doing all that you can to stand. As I said, having done all to stand in Ephesians 6 and 13, you have to do everything in your power and in your heart and in your mind to be able to stand. You have to get that 100%. Right? You have to get that 100% to Allah and you are also, for women, you have to get that 100% to your husband. And in doing that, Allah will send us help. Because Allah weighs the spirits in men. And that will rid us of the empty fear of the devil and its works that dwell in us. Now, I know I said Allah weighs the spirits. I want to touch on that real quick. Can we go to Proverbs 16 and 2 and 3, please? Sure. Proverbs 16, verse 2. All the ways of man are clean in his own eyes, but Ahaya weighs the spirits. Commit thy works unto Ahaya, and thy thoughts shall be established. Mm. So many a times men don't want to see their faults. That's why he said all the ways of men are clean in his own eyes. And the more we don't want to see our faults, the more the devil has place in us. Because we don't want to deal with it. We don't want to put forth the effort to change it. And having to actually humble ourselves and confess that we're doing something wrong. Or that we're struggling with something. But Allah, he waves the spirits. He's actually, he can see, just like we spoke of before. He can see because he's a spiritual being. And what does he say? Commit thy works unto Ahaya. Put forth that effort. Make a commitment for yourself to be aligned with Allah and his desires for you and ridding of your own. And thy thoughts shall be established. So everything you put your mind to do, it's going to come to pass because Allah is going to start helping you. Can we um, continue in the Shepherd of Hermits? I think we're in Mandate 12, chapter 5, verse 3. All right. Mandate 12, chapter 5, verse 3. When a man has filled amply sufficient jars with good wine... And among these jars, a few are quite empty. He comes to the jars and does not examine the full ones, for he knows that they are full. But he examineth the empty ones, fearing lest they have turned sour. For empty jars soon turn sour, and the taste of the wine is spoiled. So also the devil cometh to all the servants of Allah, tempting them. As many then as are complete in the faith, opposing him mightily and he departed from them not having a place where he can find an entrance so he cometh next to the empty ones and finding a place goeth into them and further he doeth that what he willeth in them and they become submissive slaves to him right so that's just reiterating what we spoke of before so that you can actually understand. The less we're full and the less we're aligned with Allah when we have those still those those spots of our own desires, it allows the devil to have place. Right. 
But the more we're full, the more we're aligned with Alahayim and our own desires are gone. And we've and we've conformed to the desires of Alahayim, walking as he desires us. We we're able to withstand the devil mightily. Because he doesn't have a place in our heart. So you can see that parallels right with the Acts of Thomas. So you can have multiple testimonies given the same account to know that the spirits work against you. And also confirm the work we have to do when given 100%. And not being double-minded in our work to righteousness, nor in our heart. Now let's understand why the devil attacks the women being a weaker vessel, as it states in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 7, and what his intentions are. Even now to this day, and lifting up women against men and causing that division. Um, can we go back to the lives of Adam and Eve? And we're going to be at chapter 12, please. All right. Chapter 12. And with a heavy sigh, the devil spake, O oh, Adam, all my hostility, envy, and sorrow is for thee, since it is for thee that I have been expelled from my glory which I possess in the heavens in the midst of the angels, and for thee was I cast out in the earth. Adam answered, What dost thou tell me? What have I done to thee, or what is my fault against thee? Seeing that thou hast received no harm or injury from us, why dost thou pursue us? The devil replied, Adam, what dost thou tell me? It is for thy sake that I have been hurled from that place. When thou was formed, I was hurled out of the presence of Allahim and banished from the company of the angels. When Allahim blew into thee the breath of life, and thy face and likeness was made in the image of Allahim, Michael also brought thee and made us worship thee in the sight of Allahim. And Allahim the Lord spake, Here is Adam, I have made thee in our image and likeness. And Michael went out and called all the angels, saying, Worship the image of Allah Hayim, as the Lord Allah Hayim hath commanded. And Michael himself worshipped first. Then he called me and said, Worship the image of Allah Hayim, the Lord. And I answered, I have no need to worship Adam. And since Michael kept urging me to worship, I said to him, Why dost thou urge me? I will not worship an inferior, younger being than I. I am his senior in the creation. Before he was made, I was already made. It is his duty to worship me. When the angels who were under me heard this, they refused to worship him. And Michael saith, Worship the image of Allah. I am. But if thou wilt not worship him, the Lord Allah I am will be wroth with thee. And I said, If he be wroth with me, I will set my seat above the stars of heaven, and I will be like the highest. So we get to see the truth of the matter. Man was made in the image of Elohim, while female was made from the image of man. And because man was made from the image of Elohim, the devil has his enmity with them. And the female just gets used as a tool in the process to attack the man and tear down his blessing or what he has built if she's not full of the faith. So the, the female is always used against the man when she has that place for the devil to enter in. Because that's what the devil wants. He's trying to get to the man and the woman, she's just collateral damage. That's why wives and those that have desires to be wise have to take these steps to come out of the spirits of the flesh and put on real belief, given 100% to overcome the devil's spirits that desire to dwell in us. Don't forget men, we have to do the same thing and rid of these spirits too, not to have pleasure in them or we're gonna tear down our own house. We're gonna tear down our own house, we're gonna tear down our wife and we're gonna tear down our own children. So everybody has a responsibility, all right? And for the women, if you're not aligned with Elohim and you still have desire that the devil, 
in your heart, you're going to tear down your husband, right? You're not going to be able to be in agreement with Allah Hayyam, and you're going to hurt your children. Brother Casa, can we get the um can we get the scripture um if I'm not mistaken, it's with Abraham when he went to go visit Ishmael, the first wife. Thank you, brother. So that you guys can understand how a wife, if she has these spirits dwelling in her, she's going to affect the children as well. All right. In the book of Jasher, chapter 21, verse 24. And Abram went to the wilderness, and he reached the tent of Ishmael about noon. And he asked after Ishmael, and he found the wife of Ishmael sitting in the tent with her children. And Ishmael, her husband, and his mother were not with them. And Abram asked the wife of Ishmael, saying, Where has Ishmael gone? And she said, He has gone to the field to hunt. And Abram was still mounted on the camel, for he would not get off to the ground as he had sworn to his wife Sarah that he would not get off from the camel. And Abram said to Ishmael's wife, My daughter, give me a little water that I may drink, for I am fatigued from the journey. And Ishmael's wife answered and said to Abram, we have neither water nor bread. And she continued sitting in the tent and did not notice Abraham, neither did she ask him who he was. But she was beating her children in the tent, and she was cursing them. And she also cursed her husband Ishmael and reproached him. And Abraham heard the words of Ishmael's wife to her children, and he was very angry and displeased. And Abraham called to the woman to come out to him from the tent. And the woman came and stood opposite to Abraham, for Abram was still mounted upon the camel. And Abram said to Ishmael's wife, When thy husband Ishmael returneth home, say these words to him. A very old man from the land of the Philistines came hither to seek thee, and thus was his appearance and figure. I did not ask him who he was, and seeing thou wast not here, he spoke unto me and said, When Ishmael thy husband returneth, tell him thus did this man say, when thou comest home, put away this nail of the tent which thou hast placed here, and place another nail in its stead. And Abraham finished his instructions to the woman, and he turned and went off on the camel homeward. All right. So, seeing that Abraham wasn't pleased with how the woman was operating, and the place that the devil had in her, how much more do you think Allah is not pleased? So we really have to think upon these things because those same spirits was causing her to reproach her husband and also causing her to treat her children poorly, which was giving them a bad environment to be nurtured in, to, to grow in. You know, it's just like um, concrete. How often do flowers or roses grow out of concrete? It's very hard and it doesn't happen very often unless they find a, a small little place for them to stem out from. But if you have good ground and it's nurturing and you're giving it the right um, nutrition, it's easy for the plants to grow and flourish. So women, you have to be of good ground and be easy and being able to make a good place for children and your husband to flourish. And if you haven't seen the building a safe haven, the women lesson, please go back and check out that lesson um, so that you can get that understanding and really learn and grow from that. You have anything, Casa? Um everything which you explained a little bit earlier about how the devil the attack is to get to the man he's using the woman the scriptures confirm it when anybody reads the exodus story the devil we know the devil was leading pharaoh and pharaoh in his effort to destroy the men he brought the hebrew wives the midwives to get them to help destroy the nation by threatening them that he would burn them up in their houses to see that it's scripturally accurate that the the devil does see the women as a tool, collateral damage to destroying the man. 
You probably say the scriptures confirm it. We read the scriptures. <laughs> <laughs> the other scriptures, I apologize. <laughs> you know, we have that precept, precept. <laughs> Show <Showing> up. <laughs> Uh, uh, let's get back to uh, the life of Adam and Eve. I apologize. There was two. Remember, we started with the girl power lesson. Right. Mm -hmm. Knowing for those sisters, you know now the devil's coming at you to try to destroy your family. Right. And you also know the power you have. Like, you actually have power in Allah. I am. You're the key to it all. Because when you withstand him, he can't get to your husband. Right. You know, he can't get to your children. So. Right. You're a wall in this thing. Yes, you are. All right. All right. Life of Adam and Eve, chapter 16. And Ahayalahayan was wroth with me and banished me and my angels from our glory. And on thy account were we expelled from our abodes into this world and hurled on the earth. And straightway we were overcome with grief, since we had been spoiled of so great glory. And we were grieved when we saw thee in such joy and luxury. And with guile I cheated thy wife and caused thee to be expelled through her doing from thy joy and luxury as I have been driven out of my glory. And when Adam heard the devil say this, he cried out and wept and spake, O Lord, my Allah, I am, my life is in thy hands. Banish this adversary far from me, who seeketh to destroy my soul and give me his glory, which he himself has lost. And at that moment, the devil vanished before him, and Adam endured in his penitence, standing for 40 days on end in the water of Jordan. Now we get to see Adam actually be a good example of withstanding the devil and showing that the devil is hard for the devil to entreat you or to deceive you when he doesn't have a place in you. Now, Adam had a true repentance because the devil, if the devil would have appeared to Adam at first, Adam would have withstood the devil in the first fall. And he found the weak spot in Adam, which was his wife. And it was only through his wife that he was going to be able to fall. But you see, the second time, Adam's like, no, nah. like, it's not happening. I'm not falling again. And he stood there, he cried, and he continued. He continues his penitence. Right. Now, wives and women that desire to be wives someday, you have to be trained up to be a good wife. Right? And you have to be trained up to be a good servant to Allah. It's not just something that happens overnight. And many women have this mindset that a man is just supposed to put a ring on it, quote unquote. And then the woman is going to be the person that they want them to be. But not the person that the woman wants to be. And that's the problem. Because she's being double minded. And a heart's not there. It's never going to happen in that mind frame. Yeah, you may do some things in the flesh that he desires, but the heart is the real battle. Because like Chiwa, who couldn't align her heart with Allah will for her in the first fall and couldn't align herself with the will of her husband in the second fall, we have to align our hearts to be the women or men that Allah desires us to be and have no contrary desires in our hearts, whether in personal conduct or his law. So because you don't desire it, you may be able to do it maybe once or twice or maybe a little bit, but eventually you're going to fall off because it's not something that you want to do. It's not something that you're putting forth hundred percent effort in because you truly believe in it and you're committed to it. You're just doing it to please him. You're doing it to, to get him to like you or to or whatever the case is, and you're not doing it for yourself. So women, you have to truly do things 
for yourself if you're going to do it for Allah Hayyam. If you're going to do something for your husband, you have to truly do it for yourself and have that desire that that's what you want as well. Because other than that, you're just giving a place for the devil. You're giving a place for him to enter in because you're being double minded and you're actually operating in gal because it's not a desire for you. And that causes that division or that conflict in the relationship. I'm going to touch on a part of the marriage process real quick, because I, I just feel like this needs some clarity. Um, and I feel a lot of people are unaware of these things. A lot of people don't understand that the marriage process already starts when you sleep with one another. Although it wasn't done in the Hebrew customs, um, it still is viewed to Allah as what it is. Um, can we read Exodus 22 and 16? And I'm going to further expound on it. I want to read the scripture so that people understand what I'm talking about before I really go into it. Exodus 22 and 16. And if a man entice a maid that is not betrothed. So that means she's not engaged, right? She's not engaged with anybody else and definitely not married. Like that's adultery. So if a girl is single and she's not engaged to any man, like she's not supposed to be about to get married to somebody or she's, you know what I mean? Go ahead, Catherine. And lie with her. He shall surely endow her to be his wife. So if you find a woman that's not engaged and you lie with her, you sleep with her, you're supposed to endow her to be your wife. You're supposed to take on the steps and say, okay, let me speak to your father. Let me do the proper steps that we can do this correctly. Okay. Although you're not doing it according to the, the Hebrew customs, which is waiting, okay, and then you're betrothed, and then you get married, and then when you have the ceremony, then you sleep with your wife, right? So you speak to the father beforehand, okay? And you give whatever it is, whether it be dowry, or if not dowry these days, a lot of people don't do dowry, um, it's still a custom in Africa to do dowry um, and and also a lot of Middle Eastern countries and Arabic countries, they still do dowry. But if that's not the culture and you definitely need to get permission from the father or whoever is over the, the woman. OK, that's the idealistic way to do it beforehand. But if it comes after you're supposed to follow up with these steps after the fact, okay? When y'all sleep together, you've started the marriage process. Though not the idealistic way, as I stated before, it's still viewed as the same Allah and the proper steps have to be performed afterwards. In all truth, the women and men should have been training to operate as a wife or as a husband before they came together and not trying to figure it out in the midst. So you should have been working your way and training on how to be a husband or the woman should have been training on how to be a wife before they actually went and engaged in any other activity. Okay. But instead you get for the most part in this modern day, the majority of women that dress a half naked online or in person and expect for a man to say, that's a wife. Not understanding that what you walk in is what you attract. Because we understand the significance of these spirits and how they can see one another. As we reviewed in this lesson, it's the same thing. If you walk in a harlot's attire, you're going to attract a harlot of a man. It's just that simple. As they say, birds of a feather flock together because they're walking in the same lust as you and you're attracting and the spirit can see that. 
Many people do not realize that a woman walking in such fashions or a man are walking in fornication, though they may not sleep with anyone. And walking in such fashions is means for divorce, according to scripture, being a married person. Uh, Casa, can we read Matthew 5 and 31 and 32, please? Sure. It hath been said, Whosoever shall put away his wife, let him give her a writing of divorcement. But I say unto you. Now, these are Christ's words himself, right? So we're not going to take it to the left hand or to the right. Go ahead, Casa. That whosoever shall put away his wife, saving for the cause of fornication, causeth her to commit adultery. And whosoever shall marry her that is divorced, committeth adultery. All right. So whosoever shall put away his wife, saving for the cause of fornication. Casa, can we get the definition of fornication? Um, the Hebrew is H2181, please. All right. It's from a primitive root, highly fed, and therefore wanton. All right. So being wanton is the first thing. So having that desire to be seen, having that desire to for people to lust after you, is actually one of the first things of fornication. All right. Go ahead. To commit adultery, usually of the female, and less often of simple fornication, rarely of involuntary ravishment. All right. So involuntary ravishment. That means they, they like to be adorned. They like people to, to see them. And this goes on in society all the time now, especially with social media, is that women want to dress in provocative ways so that they get the attention from men, though they may be married. And of course, it's still fornication for an unmarried woman. It's just she's not committing that fornication that is considered adultery, being married. She's just in fornication. Okay. Go ahead, Brother Cosmo. Figuratively, to commit idolatry, the Jewish people being regarded as the spouse of Ahia. Cause to commit fornication continually. Great. Be in harlot or play the harlot. Right. So to be in harlot, which means you actually perform the act or to play the harlot, which means that you dress or you operate how a harlot would. All right. Go ahead. Cause to be whore or play the whore. Commit whoredom, fall to whoredom. Cause to go a whoring, whorish. Right. So hopefully we can understand why Reuben said, by a harlot's bearing, she beguiles a man. Right. And in today's time, women use these devices to capture men. Right. So they'll put that picture or that video up and able to lower men in to capture them. Right. Can we read the Testament of Reuben, chapter five, verse three and four, please? Sure. Testament of Reuben, chapter 5, verse 3. For moreover, concerning them, the angel of the Lord told me and taught me that women are overcome by the spirit of fornication more than men, and in their heart they plot against men. And by means of their adornment, they deceive first their minds, and by the glance of the eye instill the poison. Then, through the accomplished act, they take them captive. For a woman cannot force a man openly, but by a harlot's bearing, she beguiles him. Right. So a woman doesn't have the power, just like the devil doesn't have the power to be over us or to make us sin. Right. It's within our heart that she actually uses against us. So if a man is walking in lust or he's walking in the spirit of fornication, that spirit identifies. And that's why she's able to capture those men that are attracted to that lust right and that's why she'll post the provocative pictures or she'll post a provocative video of herself right now can we get the definition where it says but by a harlot's bearing she beguiles him can we get the definition for bearing brother Casa? sure bearing 
a person's way of standing or moving. Right. So if a woman is dressing or operating in these fashions, she is walking and dealing in fornication and playing the harlot. Though she may not be sleeping with another man, but her heart is in fornication and Elohim way of the spirits. So we remember that Elohim is the one who's actually looking at the spirit that a person is walking in and seeing the spirit that's in them. And that's how we're judged. So if a woman is operating and playing the harlot, though she may not be sleeping around, just by walking and portraying that spirit, she's actually in fornication as well. Now, what are we commanded to do in such cases as believers, whether it be a man or a woman, whether a man wants to go and be provocative and show off his, his self being a married man or a woman who wants to go and show off themselves. And even for the women that want to be wives, you can't walk in this fornicative spirit expecting to find a husband because you're literally going to attract other fornicators like yourself that are operating in that same spirit. Um, can we go to the Shepherd of Hermes Mandate 4 so we can see what a married person is supposed to do if their spouse is operating in such a spirit of fornication? Hermes Mandate 4, Chapter 1, Verse 4. I say to him, Sir, permit me to ask thee a few more questions. Say on, saith he. Sir, say I, if a man who has a wife that is faithful in the Lord detect her in adultery, doth the husband sin in living with her? So long as he is ignorant, saith he, he sinneth not. But if the husband know of her sin, and the wife repent not, but continue in her fornication, and her husband live with her, he makes himself responsible for her sin and an accomplice in her adultery. Right. So if a man or woman is operating in such a way in the spirit of fornication, being married, you're supposed to separate from that person so that they can see that what they're doing is wrong and that they may repent from it. But if we stay, then just like it said when we were doing the lesson on uh, making a woman a safe haven, if they stay, they're only going to get more bold in their operating. And that's what we don't want. We actually want them to repent. So we actually have to remove ourselves so that they can see that what they're doing isn't right. Go ahead, Brother Cousin. What then, sir, say I, shall the husband do? If the wife continue in this case, let him divorce her, saith he, and let the husband abide alone. But if after divorcing his wife he shall marry another, he likewise committeth adultery. Right. You have to stay single too to give them room to repent. Right. If then, sir, say I, after the wife is divorced, she repent and desire to return to her own husband. Shall she not be received? Certainly, saith he, if the husband receiveth her not, he sinneth and bringeth great sin upon himself. Nay, one who hath sinned and repented must be received, yet not often. For there is but one repentance for the servants of Allah. For the sake of her repentance, therefore, the husband ought not to marry. This is the manner of acting enjoined on husband and wife. Not only saith he, is it adultery if a man pollute his flesh, but whosoever doeth things like unto the heathen committeth adultery. If therefore in such deeds as these likewise a man continue and repent not, keep away from him and live not with him. Otherwise thou also art partaker of his sin. Right. So you see it says, whosoever doeth things like unto the heathen commit adultery. And this was never a custom of the Hebrews. This was never a custom for our women to be half naked and, and walking around or men to be provocative. This was never a custom of ours. So you can see that the influence on society today did not come from the Hebrews, but it came from 
the heathen or the other nations. So we can't operate in these fashions and expect to be a child of Allah Hayyam, or just in general, to be a woman or a man that's actually looking for a husband or a wife, right? Because we're, we're not portraying that. We're portraying a harlot. Okay, go ahead. For this cause, you were enjoined to remain single, whether husband or wife, for in such cases, repentance is possible. I, said he, am not given an excuse that this matter should be concluded thus, but to the end that the sinner should sin no more. But as concerning his former sin, there is one who is able to give healing. It is he who hath authority over all things. Right. So the intention of the whole thing of separating yourself is so that the sinner will sin no more. Right. You want them to stop doing it so that they will actually repent from it and then come back and do what's right and be a, a, a righteous example, a righteous person operating in an orderly fashion. And by staying with them, you're saying that what they're doing is okay and what they're doing is fine. And we don't want to give that implication. So we have to separate ourselves and allow them time to repent and turn from it if it be Allah Hayyam's will. Here at HRC, we're training women up to be wives, not girlfriends and not side chicks, wives. We're building up the nation. We're strengthening the nation through the, through the mercy and the guidance of Allah Hayyam. If you practice and implement the things that we're teaching, a man will see you as a wife. And for those that are already married, your husband will see you as a virtuous woman and will appreciate the changes. In efforts to change, you have to truly hate something. You have to examine it and rationalize why it's unprofitable for you and how it negatively impacts you and your family. And you have to think about Allah Hayyam how it makes him feel. You have to find something in your heart that's more important than your desire to hold on to for you to stop. For example, myself, I struggle with lust a lot of my life. But loyalty was also a very strong belief for me as well. Because my desire outweighed my belief, I would not apply loyalty toward myself always, but would pick and choose when it worked in my advantage or apply my belief only upon others. Now, this is true so that everybody can understand and see the growth and how I had to come through something as well. So when growing and taking these steps, I found it in my heart to apply that same desire of loyalty to overshadow the lust. You have to find in your heart a reason for Allah desire upon your life to be greater and better than your own desire. Because if your desire is greater than Allah your heart will never overcome it. And without humility of heart to be able to see it, you can't change it. And that's the same thing we read in Proverbs chapter 16, verse 12. You have to want to see it. You have to want to change it and you have to put forth all everything that you got it said having done all to stand you have to give all of it to stand and to overcome it and if any part of it still dwells in you the devil still has place in you and he's going to use it he has no mercy so it's our it's our choice our decision that we have to make in order to overcome whatever it is that we're struggling with or else we're giving place to the devil to toss us and we're being double-minded in our works we have to gain confidence in the spiritual good person and not the flesh as it speaks of in first peter chapter 3 verse 3 and 4 we have to see ourselves for who we are and not who we want to be while also aspiring to be that person who we aspire to be, 
so we can see the changes that are needed to be made to get you to get you there. There's nothing wrong with loving yourself and finding the good through the process. Don't just see the bad and give Elohim praise when you see the growth in an area. Grow to know yourself and take the time and effort to make the necessary changes you've seen while examining. And be in constant prayer for the things you don't want to see because your heart's desires. So Elohim may have mercy for those to be revealed. Nothing is going to change unless you put forth the effort. Then Elohim will help you. But you have to do it in humility and truly desire his will upon your life in all aspects, not just the areas you desire to change. Pride is when one departed from Elohim, as Sirach 10 and 12 states, and pride will keep you from seeing you. If you don't know yourself or want to see yourself, how can you know and see one greater than you or see the one you're supposed to be in agreement with in this walk in life? That's something to think about. I got one more topic I want to address before, um, before we get out of here, before we get done with this lesson today. Um, women trying to get pregnant on purpose. I want to touch on that real quick um, because I want to address the issue. Walking in efforts of trying to keep a man, but not willing to make the necessary changes to make him happy or to make Elohim happy. And that is the main problem. When a woman does such a thing, it's because she doesn't want to change. This is a worldly mindset, and I pray to Elohim that this is desire to come out of the spirit and to change. Having this desire for a man to just accept you for how you are in your iniquity and cherish you in your follies is the way of the world today. Women are more prone to narcissistic traits than men. Not wanting to see their own faults and change them, but projecting their wrongs on their spouse using reverse psychology to make him the reason of contention or error and justification of your own wrongdoings so you don't have to confess your fault and change. Please listen to this lesson and take these steps. Really find it in your heart to examine and see that, that your bottle is empty and needs to be filled. If anyone needs this feeling of the spirit and is struggling with desires that are causing you not to be the man or woman you desire to be, please send us an email at hebrewreaders at gmail.com. We'd be glad to pray for you or pray with you. We all need each other and we have to walk together to overcome. Please like and share the videos so that we may help many others and strengthen them as well in the spirit of Yahche, our Lord and Savior. With that, we love you all and may Ahayah Elohim keep you in your endeavors of righteousness. You got anything, Brother Kasa? No, sir. <laughs> this was very good. Praise Ahayah be praised. We hope everybody enjoyed the lesson and uh, I keep you all. Please um, visit us at HebrewReaders.com. Uh, we have so much information on the website. And like I said before, please send us an email at HebrewReaders at gmail.com. Um, if you have any prayer requests or anything that you want to just um, contact us about, we're always here. Um, and thank you all for continually supporting the church. And we just pray that Allah may grow the work of our hands, that he's placed in our hands, and that um, he'll be glorified. We give glory to Ahaya, we give glory to Yache, and the Holy Spirit will walk with Kodoshi. Um, Brother Kasa. Don't forget, as you mentioned, the proper ways of marriage, we do have the website tab on Bill and the Family that explains the proper means of marriage and marriage life and such that you can find on the website. And there will be a link that comes up with this so you can just tap on it and get led to it amen so without further ado we praise the higher and may you all um keep keep on the fight keep on fighting and keep on learning and growing praise the higher
HRC, 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 HRC,